in my teen years, I pretty much joined a gang, you know, and and um, I clung to that. And what attracted me to the gang was actually just the unity. We all had something in common. A lot of us were miserable. We had uh, no fathers in our lives, and so. It's like a pack of dogs, you know, they, we, we hung together and we clung together. That was Carlos Calon featured in a moving new film, The Streets Were My Father. Sunday, June 20th is Father's Day, but for some like Carlos, the holiday can be a painful reminder of dads who are absent or abusive. My next guest is one of the top 20 radio hosts in the country. He's here tonight as an executive producer, along with uh, Walden Media's uh, Chip Flaherty, of The Streets Were My Father, a film featuring the stories of three inner-city Chicago men who break the cycle of fatherlessness, gangs, and crime to find redemption. Lee Habib joins us from Mississippi. Lee, thanks for being here. Um, I, I want to begin with Our American Stories, your radio show, because it really gave birth to this remarkable new film project. You're the founder, the CEO, host of the show. Tell us why you decided to create a nationally syndicated show telling stories of remarkable and everyday Americans. Look, so much of the media is about conflict. And look, I'm a libertarian conservative. And I like what I like, and I believe what I believe. But I don't wake up every day thinking about politics. In fact, it's about the sixth or seventh thing I think about. I think about my family. I even think about some of my favorite sports teams. I think about the Lord a lot, and pray a lot, and hope each day to be a little bit better a person than I was the day before, like so many believers. And so I, I thought, what would a show sound like with no opinion, with no politics, and just stories coming from the American people or from historians who could tell us about the Mayflower or tell us about D-Day or Bastogne or tell us about great entrepreneurs or great fake leaders. And most important, stories that come just from ordinary Americans who do extraordinary things every day. You know, Raymond, the bias we were trying to correct for, I think most of us could agree the media leans to the left, if not further to the left. But I think what also the media has a bias towards is the train wreck, to the bad news and to conflict mm -hmm. and good news, the world that works. Well, a lot of media types just aren't interested in telling positive stories about a really good and beautiful country filled with good and beautiful people doing their best every day to live good and productive lives. And faith is an element of so many people's lives in this country. And it's been reduced to social issues, as if we wake up every morning thinking about gay marriage and abortion. Important issues to many, many Christians, but love, Love is the biggest issue. And how do we love our neighbors as ourselves? And how do we best serve God in our communities? These were questions we tried to resolve with the show. And I think it's why it's growing. It's sort of a respite, an oasis from, from, mm -hmm. from, the, from the conflict and the back and forth and a place to just sit back and enjoy some stories that make people feel good about being a human being and about being an American. Fatherlessness seems to be a common denominator in almost every societal ill we're seeing today, Lee. Uh, the statistics on kids who grow up without fathers uh, are really grim. 90% of homeless and runaways are fatherless, 85% of kids with behavioral disorders, 85% uh, of youths in prison. Explain the connection between absent fathers and incarceration that you found while researching and writing this film. Well, look, what, what you find out quickly, and we learn from these three guys, and their stories reflect almost all of the stories. Look, a father serves so many purposes. One is to protect the kids. Another is a provider. But the other thing is this model for how we channel our masculinity, how we channel our masculine impulses, the testosterone running through our bodies and our veins when we're young men. How do we channel, some, to channel sometimes the natural propensity to aggression? There are beautiful ways to productively channel these things. But we, if we don't have a father in the home, Raymond, who do we model ourselves after? So what happens with these boys is, A, when they have no fathers, they're angry. They don't know why. Mm. It's an inchoate anger, the abandonment issues, or a dad who's just yeah. mean. They're angry. God, what did I do to deserve this? By the way, this separates them from God, right? Because how do you get right. to the father without a father? And the next natural mm. step, Raymond, is an older man in a gang coming to a 13-year-old and grooming him to join a place where he gets belonging, protection, and camaraderie and love. 
And that is how the gangs work. And, and in the end, the boys learn masculine tendencies and masculine behavior from gangs instead of fathers. Hmm. Uh, the streets where my father follows the lives, as you mentioned, of these three inner city Chicago men. Uh, we've met Carlos already. Uh, and it, then it, it starts with that journey from fatherlessness and abusive fathers to gang life. What was the attraction to gang life for these men? Was it just to fill that hole left by the fathers? And to, and to as you said, find an outlet for the natural aggression, the natural uh, 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 aggressive tendency that men have within them. Indeed. And think about, you know, when you go on a fishing trip with your father or some adventure with your father. You know, this is an adventure for these boys, right? They go out mm. and they, they conquer the streets. They take on rival gangs. They fight. They, 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 def they defend. And there's honor in these places, right? It's a, it's a, mm. it's a weird honor. It's a, it's it's a, a perverse creepy honor, and bad yeah. honor. But it's an honor culture like the mafia itself has an honor culture. It's not a good honor culture. Mm -hmm. It's a sick and upside right. down honor culture without God. But the fact of the matter is it approximates many of the things that would happen in a family, only life is upside down in the family of a gang. But it is a very mm -hmm. attractive alternative for kids with no other alternatives on the streets but gangs. I want to play another bite from the movie. Uh, this is Leslie Williams from The Streets Where My Father Was. I wanted a father to, to be able to discipline me and say, look, this is the wrong way to go. I wanted, I desired to have a father who, 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 who would tell me that what I did was wrong. Excuse me. I desired a father that would set me on his lap and tell me that school was the right thing for me to do, to go to school, to encourage me. When God came into my life, I began to read and study about God being a father and what he desired for me. God became my father. It's really powerful. And uh, you know, it underscores, Lee, what so many psychologists have told me over the years, that men need to have that physical father so they can connect with the eternal father, with God the Father. And when that bond isn't there, when that emotional validation of what it means to be a man is missing, all hell breaks loose. And that's what you see here, heartbreak. It is heartbreaking. And, and this guy is crying because in large measure, he spent from the ages of about 16, 16 and a half, when he went to Cook County Prison, to 17, when he finds himself in Statesville. And if you've ever seen a big, wow. ugly jail that looks like it came out of Shawshank, Statesville, Illinois, is that prison. And I couldn't, you know, when you're walking the walk with these guys, you have tremendous empathy. And you just can imagine being 17 years old and walking into this giant penitentiary with rough, tough men looking and gunning for you. And it's just, it's sad. And, and, and in the end, guys like Leslie didn't feel like they had a lot of options. And as we're talking about mm -hmm. inner city lives, as we're talking about the poor white kids stuck in a holler somewhere, we got to remember that we need to love them. We need to be there. Um, Christian witness in prisons is a marvel. It's a miracle, actually, what happens in these films. We see what Christ does in lives, turning guys from gangsters into productive members of society. No social work program can do that, Raymond. The government can't do that. God alone, Jesus alone, saves. Mm -hmm. you know, and many, all of these guys in the movie, they end up in prison, but not all prisoners learned this lesson, Lee. Was it personal witness that brought all of these men to, to finding their true father who loved them? Yes, prison ministry programs that ultimately, as they turned one inmate to Christ, those inmates became 
preachers and, and teachers in their prison and evangelizers. Hey, look, Paul didn't have a theology degree, right, Raymond? I mean, he knew what he knew, and he went out to the world to witness. And that's what these guys were doing. In fact, Leslie was brought to Christ by a guy named Peanut. His nickname was Peanut because he was so big. He had a life sentence, no chance of parole, and Peanut was always smiling. And Peanut was leading people to the Lord. Imagine a guy serving a life sentence, always smiling. And Leslie said to himself one day, why is this guy smiling and why am I so miserable? And there's got to be a better life for me out there. I can't do this anymore. Enough is enough. God, if you're out there, if there is a God, Lord, if you're real, show yourself to me. And when we supplicate ourselves to him, right, Raymond, and we've all, look, many of us have been there. We may not have committed a crime or a murder, but we've yeah. hit some lows in our life, the valleys. And it's in those valleys that we tend to, and, and, and in, in many ways, lean on the Lord. Regrettably, in America, you know, not, there aren't enough valleys in too many Christians' lives to lean on the Lord, and we don't lean on him enough. These men did, mm -hmm. and my goodness, Lee, a revolution occurred in, in their in, lives. In my final couple of minutes here, many would say these are sad stories, particularly on Father's Day. You call this film a love story. Why? Well, it's a love story because, A, it, it proves that no matter where we are in our walk, that God is our Father. And I, I really hope that people who have good fathers will watch this film, too, because sometimes we take for granted what we have. It's only in its absence that we can truly understand sometimes the meaning and value of things. I had a wonderful father, but my father, because he knew we were privileged, and Raymond, forget white privilege, the father privilege is what matters most. My dad insisted that we work with kids who didn't have fathers and that we reach out to them and that we get to know them and put a body on them. He was a lifetime educator, but the real reason he got an education was to try and find those boys who are vulnerable and put men on those boys and those girls too, because women suffer from fatherlessness too. Yes, they do indeed. They do indeed. They have trust issues and, and, and all kinds of things happen. Reading cues from men. Uh, it's so important what you mentioned there, mentoring kids who don't have fathers. And I think sometimes because of the busyness of our lives, I see this when I go to schools, Lee, when I give, you know, uh, author presentations and meet with kids, you can, you can see they're yearning for the attention of an adult and that time spent on just them. It's really important. And I thank you for reminding us all of that and so much more. The Streets Were My Father, produced by Lee Habib and Our American Stories, is available to stream now. You can rent it or purchase it at SalemNow.com. Thank you, Lee. Thank you, Raymond.